It's over, McCarthy bros. I'm sorry, but old Kevin McCarthy has been physically removed from the House of Representatives. He no longer speaks for the Russian, for the Russian, for the Republican majority. Excuse me, slip of the tongue, as we all know. Any any Republican who does not support Kevin McCarthy is a Russian stooge. In fact, one of the main reasons why old Speaker McCarthy was ejected from his seat was because of his unwavering commitment to supply unlimited billions and billions of dollars to Ukraine. There are a lot of reasons to hate Kevin McCarthy. He's a bad person in his personal life. He's a bad person in his professional life. These are things I've gone over time and time again. But what pushed a lot of people over the edge is this incessant need to fund the war in Ukraine and this cartoonish, unabashed support for one side, pretending like they are angels on earth, as opposed to the Ruskies, which are the devil incarnate. To the point that he even wore a Ukraine flag pocket square, because you see, a, a Ukraine flag lapel pin, that's not enough to express your fealty to Zelensky. You have to wear the Ukraine flag pocket square. So now, within a week or so of each other, we have both the Speaker of the Canadian Parliament and the Speaker of the U.S. House of Representatives um, losing their jobs over support for Ukraine. You love to see it. And a new anti-Ukraine government has just been elected in Slovakia. Elections are coming up in Poland, Polish opinion starting to finally sour on Ukraine. Of course, they still don't like Russia. I mean, Poland has plenty of reason to hate Russia. Um, <clears throat> and so instinctively, when this war broke out, the Poles were uh, in lockstep with the Ukrainians, even though the Ukrainians um, have had a long history of hatred and animosity towards Poland. Um, <clears throat> much of what is now Ukraine was once part of Poland, and the Ukrainians ethnically cleanse those areas so that they may conquer them. Uh, for their own nation. Uh, Ukraine's former, uh, I think he was the, I think he was the foreign secretary maybe, or whatever they call it. Uh, I remember him making some very provocative and offensive comments about both Poland and Germany. Of course, the Germans are cucks and you would never expect them to fight back or to defend themselves. Um, but the Poles are different. The Poles are much more self-respecting people. And so I don't think that Kevin McCarthy's uh, loss, that his removal from the speaker's chair, the confiscation of his speaker's gavel, I don't think that that is all a direct result of the war in Ukraine and his unabashed support for it. But that is a major contributing factor that pushed some people over the edge, and it only took a few people. I think it took, what, eight Republicans? That's all they needed to get rid of him. And uh, <clears throat> once Matt Gates brought up the motion and it came to a vote, um, it became clear rather quickly that McCarthy was out of a job. And so call this what you want. Call it the Zelensky curse. Call it um, Call it anything. He's gone, and hopefully he won't be back. Now, a lot of people, I think, uh, reasonably raise the idea, okay, so is it really a good idea to get rid of McCarthy? Could he be replaced by someone worse? Thomas Massey, for this reason, did not support getting rid of McCarthy. Um, Thomas Massey had cut a deal with McCarthy before uh, in order to vote for him to become Speaker earlier this year. He was one of the first uh, Freedom Caucus members to flip to McCarthy's side, if I remember correctly. Um, although I thought that that was over uh, the whole, uh, what was it called, the Committee on the Weaponization of the Federal Government or something. And that, uh, that committee doesn't seem to have gone anywhere. And uh, Thomas Massey wasn't even the chairman of it. So I don't know what Thomas Massey... Uh, got in exchange for supporting McCarthy back then, or what he was promised. I don't know if he was given what he was promised. I don't know anything about that. Um, but I do think that it's a fair point to say, hey, 
you know, McCarthy might not be great. In fact, he's awful. He's not as awful as John Boehner or Paul Ryan, which is a very, very low bar. That is the lowest bar that you could possibly clear. I mean, you know, it was bad enough. I mean, it was really hard for Paul Ryan to stoop to the levels of John Boehner because John Boehner was so thoroughly hated. And when Paul Ryan was brought in, that was seen as an actual, you know, like, you know, good pick. I mean, compared to John Boehner, you know, because Paul Ryan was much more associated um, with, uh, like, I guess the right at the time, certainly than John Boehner was. You know, he was seen as less of just a pure craven politician. And he still ended up being uh, just as bad, if not worse, depending on the issue, as Boehner. Uh, And so getting rid of Kevin McCarthy, could there be someone worse? Sure. But to me, the value here is in proving that it can be done. Because never before in American history have we gotten to the point to where a member of the House threatened to file a motion to vacate the chair. And they actually were able to go through with it. And the speaker was voted out. What's always happened is they just, you know, either resign ahead of time or there's never enough support in the House to warrant filing the warrant, you know, the motion to vacate the chair and actually doing it. Um, it just, it's never, there's never been a successful attempt of it in history. But this time they did it. It went to a vote and McCarthy lost that vote. And so this is powerful. What this is showing is that a, a small group dedicated group of people can upset the apple cart and they can get rid of leadership and so if you're the speaker of the house you need every single republican on your side you can't afford to kick certain members certain factions i.e the faction uh, of people who actually listen to the voters you can't just keep kicking them in the teeth over and over and over again and think that you're going to be able to keep your job the leadership in washington We know that they don't fear the people they never have. That's why they arrest the people and throw them in prison or just summarily execute them in their homes. But if they could at least fear each other, that would be a start. If they could think, you know, gee, my position might not be inevitable. It might not be eternal. Um, You know, imagine if they could do to Mitch McConnell what they just did to Kevin McCarthy. It would be quite something. But nevertheless, if there is always this threat, if you're the Speaker of the House, that you could lose your job on any day, and you know that's a real threat because you just watched Kevin McCarthy be demoted to being a nobody. He went from being at the top of the heap to a backbencher in one afternoon. You would know that that can happen to you as well. And so you're going to act differently. You're actually going to try and be popular. You're going to strive to have more than a 5% approval rating because you know why it was so easy for uh, these few Republicans to vote to get rid of the Speaker of the House? Because they know that none of their voters would ever punish them for voting against McCarthy. Um, Their voters hate McCarthy just as much as they do. Actually, probably more because, I mean, what does he have, like a 9% approval rating? I might be being generous there. Maybe he has a 5% approval rating. Um, Most people have never even heard of him. So that's kind of an issue when you're third in line to be the president. Nobody knows who you are. Speaker of the House should be a dynamic position. That should be something where, you know, it's actually difficult for people to to become it. It should be difficult for people to maintain that position. And those who are in it should be <clears throat> they should they should have to face some scrutiny. There should be some standard. That's all I'm saying. Currently, we have no standard. You know, once you're the speaker, you just you wait lo- your turn long enough. You know, you finagle enough, you you bribe enough people, you get enough blackmail material on different members of Congress, and that's how you become the speaker. I would like it to be a little more competitive than that. And so that's what I see here. Um, I don't know who will replace McCarthy. Could they be worse? Sure, but again, as bad as McCarthy is, what does what does worse look like? How much how much worse could you possibly get? You know, um, and if that person is so bad, guess what? Remove them too. Get rid of them. You keep removing them, that's what you should do. You should keep removing them until you get someone who actually does a good job. That should be the rule here. It's not like, oh my gosh, well, if we start removing the speaker now, you know, when will this end? You know, it's like, yeah, it'll end when we get a good speaker, which has never happened in my lifetime. These people all suck. 
They're the worst people in America. You know, as much as uh, William F. Buckley Jr. was a villain um, and not a good dude and a gatekeeper, one comment that he made, which uh, holds true today, is I would rather take, you know, the first 100 names out of, uh, you know, the phone book and be ruled by them than, uh, you know, the faculty of Harvard University. Uh, you can adapt that to just saying, hey, the first, uh, what is it, 435 names out of the phone book? I'd much rather, I'd much rather have them be our representatives than the 435 satanic ghouls in Washington. So, with that said, um, I want to thank Matt Gates and all who supported this motion, and I will see you folks back here tomorrow.